Welcome back everybody, more RAM 3D. Today I'm going to go over a tutorial on Cinema 4D 2024. Yes, brand new, just came out. And there's a lot of exciting new workflows, especially with Pyro and the Dynamics, as well as I'm going to throw a little Voronoi in there with the Dynamics and a little bit of Redshift. Keep in mind, I'm not going to do any super high resolution parameters. I'm going to leave everything at the default parameters just for time's sake for the tutorial. Hope you enjoy. And without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get this started. I am going to go ahead and delete the cube and the figure here. And that just leaves the plane already ready to go. Just adjust it to the size that I want. Do something like that. We're going to go ahead and add in a sphere. Basic parameters are here. Sphere. Let's go ahead and uh, drop the radius down a little bit. Come on. Go right around 40 ish. As the eyeball, you know, some of our parameters. And that's a good thing about C4D. It's like a toy box. It's like you're playing in the toy box. And you pretty much just, you know, play with your settings until you pretty much get what you want. As far as the segments, I'm going to drop these way down to maybe around 15 just so it'll speed up things a little bit within our simulation we don't need a lot of detail i'm um, pretty much just showing you guys the procedure and you know not really focusing on parameters so by the time you're done with this you should be able to do a basic setup and you can fine tune it as much as you want all right so now we got our segments to 15 we got a radius to 43 we're off the ground a little bit let's see go right about here don't need too much height on it now that we got our plane and our sphere we're going to go ahead and start adding our tags. And right here, simulation tags, the brand new dynamic system that interacts with this pyro and it interacts with the cloth and rope and all that. It is really awesome. So right now, if I were to hit play, we should have some kind of dynamic. There we go. It just falls to the floor. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and add Voronoi. I'm going to go ahead to low graph, Voronoi fracture. I'm just going to slide the sphere right in there. Boom. And there we go. Already got our pieces. If you can see that, let me zoom in a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and give a little bit of an angle so we can see it a little bit better for when it hit the ground. And now that we have our Voronoi fracture, we want to actually go ahead and actually let me show you this first. So if I hit play now, let's see what happens. Boom. Aren't they supposed to shatter and break apart? Once we go ahead and add the sphere into the Voronoi, you want to go ahead and slide that tag over to the Voronoi. Keep in mind that the Voronoi is actually controlling the object. So now if we hit play, we should get what we're looking for. Bam, look at that. That's almost there, but I want to dial in a little bit of this friction. So I want a little less sliding going on here. So let's come on down here. Dynamics. There is. And also keep in mind, there are a lot of drop downs inside of the Pyro. So even me, you know, I've been using it since 2023, but now in 2024, they always move a few things around every time. It's hard to find some things, and there's nothing wrong with that. But the main thing is you actually find it and get it done. So in here, now we're going to go ahead and crank up the friction. I think I'm going to go to about, I don't know, 20. Let's see what we get. All right. Way less sliding. Very good. Very good. So I'm going to dial that down a little bit. Maybe to 15. Let's see what we get. All right. A little bit of slide. And I just want a slight little tiny bit more. So let's do my lucky number 11. Let's do just solid 11 see what we get and like I say you just play the parameters pretty much until you get what you get want there you go perfect 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 got a tiny bit of slide but not too much so pretty much what we're trying to see is I'm going to add a pyro to the sphere and just want to see those little streaks or those legs tracers whatever you want to call it of smoke you know attached to the pieces all right so we got our dynamics in 
uh, we got a voidoid fracture happening. So let's go ahead and add in, come back to simulation, pyro. Bam, there you go. So as of right now, the first thing you want to do when you come into pyro is you want to make sure you have everything uh, taken care of inside the objects uh, tab. So pretty much we know I want to use smoke, so that's on export. I might change the color, which I doubt, but that's on export. I only want smoke, so temperature is going to go to off. Um, I'm not making an explosion or anything, so we don't need fuel along with temperature. And velocity I want to keep on export because there's movement with the pieces. All right, so now that that's done, we want to go ahead and see. Come on over to temperature and turn it off because if I hit play right now, woof, what do you see? Fire, right? So let's go ahead and turn that off. Now, what do we get? Smoke, and that's all we want. Okay, so now we have our smoke. Um, we want to go ahead and tell C4D, because if you notice, the smoke was starting right away. We want to go ahead and animate this enabled right here. That's going to be the key thing to this little bit of a setup we have going on here. So, right now it's on, and we don't want it on. So, I'm going to disable it right now and see when this hits the ground. So, we're hitting the ground right around 13th frame. So that's a perfect place to actually have it on. So what I'm going to do is go to 14. I'm going to tick this on. And right here, add a keyframe. Boom, we have a keyframe right there that I just added. I'm going to go one frame behind it, tick this off, and add a keyframe. And then I'm going to go to the first frame, or the zero frame, that's still off and add a keyframe. And here we are. All of our keyframes are here if I highlight them. Perfect. What I like to do is highlight these two in case I need to slide it around in case it doesn't react exactly where I wanted it to. So now, if we slide back and forth between these two, it should on, off, on, off, if you look over to the right of enabled. So that's exactly what we want. So let's do a real quick playthrough and see if it reacts the way we want. There we go. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Very good, very good. But now we notice that the dissipation, it's off. Like I say, I'm not going really detailed into the settings, but uh, we have to find pyro scene. See, you see all these drop downs and everything's tucked into each other. It gets a little hard to find stuff even if you've been playing with it after you know for a little while even uh after they do a bunch of changes <laughs> so we're going to come to density here and i believe this is our dissipation and the higher the number i believe it dissipates quicker so that's on seven i'm gonna crank this up to maybe 34. let's see if we get anything any different i believe we are and I'm just gonna leave it at that. Uh, the main thing here is the procedure and you guys can, you know, take it upon yourself later on and fine tune it all and get it looking show ready if you need it. I just wanna make sure you have the process down by the time you leave. All right, so now that that's done, it's time to actually think about how we're gonna render this. So if I hit play right now and stop it on that frame, if we hit the IPR, no smoke, none at all. Um, so let's go ahead and stop the IPR. And we're going to go ahead and go to create in the material section. And we're going to go ahead to materials. And we're going to hit this pyro volume. So let's click in here. One thing you usually have to worry about, or a step that you have to keep into consideration, but because we went ahead and turned temperature off in the objects area it won't be a problem 
But if you did not turn it off and you had them all selected, but you just want smoke, if you do not delete this temperature here, you will still get fire in your render. So even though we turned it off over there, I went ahead and deleted it just in case. And now you just take the pyro volume and put it right on the pyro tag. There we go. Now we should be able to bring up the IPR. We should be able to hit play on the IPR. See what we get. There we go. Took it a second, but smoke pops right in in the IPR. Just like that. And we are now rendering with Redshift and rendering out Pyro. We've added a dynamic system. The new dynamics in the new simulation area that interacts with smoke and cloth and rope. And we got the Roino in to even interact with the Pyro as well as the dynamics. So all in all, we've covered those beautiful new features in the new dynamic system within Cinema 4D 2024. So let me go ahead and hit play here. See if we get a little bit further within the simulation. It's just a beautiful thing. Cinema 4D 2024 is really, really awesome. They have a whole lot of new workflow updates that make everything so much easier. Yeah, and we thank you so much for tuning in for more RAM 3D. If you want more videos like this, please subscribe and support. Give us a thumbs up and we'll definitely make more. Until next time.